All right, this lesson is about circumscribed angles and something called the in-center, which is a kind of triangle center that uh, you could get by putting a circle inside of a triangle. All right, let's take a closer look. A landscaper wants to build a walkway tangent to the circular park shown in the diagram below. Um, tangent, all right, so this is a circular park um, so just examples of tangent, please remember that a tangent is a line or segment that just touches the circle at one point. So for example, that would be a tangent. Um, I could have drawn it, oops, I could have drawn it over here as well. That could be tangent. Okay, I could have put it over here. That could be tangent. All right, so um, what else? The other parkway pictured is a radius of the circle and has a slope of negative one over two on the grid. All right, so that walkway that they are talking about is this, all right? So this is a walkway. And you can see the slope is negative one over two, down one over two. So that's a walkway that they're speaking of. Um, if the walkways should intersect at the point four comma negative two, hmm, let's see, four comma negative two is right here. All right, so um, our tangent walkway and this walkway are supposed to intersect right here. That means this green dot has to be the point of tangency. So I need to finagle this around a little bit, okay, and try to get this to be the point of tangency. Now I'm going to be real careful about it um, because one thing that you're going to learn is um, the, a radius and a tangent are going to be perpendicular. Okay, 90 degrees. Um, now what that also means, uh, if you look at the slopes, uh, if, if these two are perpendicular then if uh, this pink line here has a slope of negative 1 over 2. Then this blue line, I'm going to make it blue by the way, I just decided, I know you're excited. The blue line is going to have a slope that is opposite in sign and reciprocal. So if this is negative slope, this will be a positive slope. If this is 1 over 2, then this will be 2 over 1. But we don't really put 2 over 1, do we? Uh, we just put 2. So this blue path needs to have a slope of 2 over 1. So starting from here, if I go up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, you can see that it has the right type of path. Okay, um, now let's, if I were to continue, to continue this uh, pattern, okay, up 2 over 1, it would continue like this, up 2 over 1, up 2 over, whoops, I missed. Okay, up 2 over 1, like this. If I were to continue the pattern in the other direction, down 2, back 1, down 2, back 1, down 2, back 1, down 2, back 1. All right, you can see I got a little bit off, so I'm going to fix it. Okay, it's going to come through here, and I'm going to extend it and fix it, because it should go through there. Okay, that's a better path. So, um, what equation can the landscaper use to graph the new walkway? Okay, so I need the graph of uh, the equation of this blue line. So, um, these uh, blanks are sort of walking me through the steps of it. Okay, um, what is this mess? All right, a line with slope of. Well, this blue line, as we said, has a slope of 2. Okay, now the y-intercept. If I look back, this uh, blue path has a y-intercept of negative 10. Interesting, negative 10. So if I think y equals mx plus b, that's y equals 2x minus 10. Okay, that would be the equation of the blue path. All right, brilliant. All right, let me say this again in case I didn't emphasize it enough. Um, a radius and a tangent 
are always going to be perpendicular. So they're telling us that QR is tangent, and of course SR is a radius, so guess what? That means they are automatically perpendicular. That means this is a right triangle happening here. It says, what's the length of QR? Well, once I know this is a right triangle, guess what? Pythagorean theorem is our best friend. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. X squared plus 12 squared is equal to 37 squared. Okay, that's x squared plus 144 is equal to, okay, 37 squared. Okay, that is 1,369. Subtract 144 from both sides. Okay, that's 1,225. Um, now I need to take the square root of both sides. All right, so the square root of 1,225. And that's 35. All right, so that is the answer to number two. All right, number three, very similar. BC is tangent. Uh, AB is clearly a radius, so once again, a radius is always going to be perpendicular to the tangent. So that means this is 90 degrees, this is a right triangle. Okay, what is the length of BC is the question. <laughs> um, BC, uh, once again, let's do the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, um, this hypotenuse here is... 29, 20 plus 9. So when we do our leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared, it's going to look like this. x squared plus 20 squared is equal to 29 squared. So that's going to be x squared plus 400 is equal to, let's see, 29 squared that is 841. So I will subtract 400 from both sides. Um, that's 441, of course. Okay, so that gives me x squared is equal to 441. And then we will take the square root. Uh, I didn't mean to do it like that. We'll take the square root of both sides. Okay, so the square root of 441, that's 21. And that's it, we're supposed to find BC and uh, we did it using the Pythagorean theorem. All right, for number four, Emma must prove that AB is tangent to circle C at point A. Um, we need a picture, don't we? All right, here's circle C. Um, she's supposed to prove that AB is tangent. Okay, so I'm gonna start it off. Um, Okay, so let's see, where would it be tangent? Okay, so that would be tangent about like that. Okay, so prove that AB is tangent to circle C at point A. So if it's tangent at point A, that means this is point A. If it's circle C, that means the center of the circle is C. If it's AB, that means the other end of the segment has to be B. So right there, that gives me a triangle. Hello. Triangle goes like this. Whoops, that was a fail. Let's try again. Boom. One more time. Boom. There we go. Third time's a charm. Okay. 
Okay, that is the triangle uh, with with which we are dealing. Okay, so this is the picture being described. She is going to show the triangle ABC is a right triangle. What is an important part of her proof? Um, why is this an, an important part of her proof? Well, um, basically, here's the thought process. If triangle ABC is a right triangle, that means angle A will be a right angle. That would show that AC is perpendicular to AB. Okay, if this is a right angle, that means AC is perpendicular to AB. AC will only be perpendicular to AB if AB is a tangent because of the theorem that says the radius is always perpendicular to the tangent. Alright, so if we know that these are perpendicular, that shows that AB is the tangent. That's why it's an important part of her proof. All right, moving on. Okay, if you have an angle that is uh, circumscribed around a circle, um, here's the relationship. First of all, understand that, um, see how the angle is touching the circle in two places. That is breaking the circle into two arcs. I have uh, an arc here on the uh, inside that's a little bit smaller, like this, something like this. Okay, I didn't draw that very well, but you get the idea. All right, and then I have this green arc on the outside. Now, the relationship is like this. First of all, the angle, um, let's call the angle theta. And uh, we'll call this smaller arc uh, y, and we'll call the larger arc x, all right? So this x is the green arc. Maybe I should color it. That would make sense, wouldn't it? Okay, so the smaller arc here will be y, and the larger arc here will be x. Now the relationship will be like this. Um, theta is going to equal one half of the uh, big arc minus the small arc. Okay, in fact, maybe I'll put it to you this way. It's going to be the big arc minus the small arc. So it'll be x minus y divided by 2. All right, this is the relationship, all right, in this type of situation. All right, so it'll be the bigger arc minus the smaller arc divided by two. That'll give you uh, the angle. So for number five, uh, this angle A touches the circle at points B and C, and it separates the circle into the smaller arc uh, BC, um, which is 127, and this larger arc, um, the major arc, that's um, 233. So the angle is going to equal the big arc minus the small arc divided by 2. All right, and that is 53 degrees. So that is the answer to problem number five. All right, now looking at problem number six. This time they only gave us one arc, but that does not bother us at all because we know that the entire circle is 360 degrees. So if I want to find the rest of the circle, the major arc, all I have to do is go of 360 minus 125. That's 235 degrees. So that tells me that the major arc out here is 235 degrees. 
Alright, it's clear if I add up these two, it'll make 360. You can check it out if you need to. Um, now, just like we did before, we have learned that um, the angle, and we're talking about angle DEF, is this angle right here. Um, the angle uh, in this position will equal the big arc minus the smaller arc divided by 2. That is 55 degrees. And that's the answer number six. All right, number seven, almost the same thing. Again, the whole circle is 360 degrees. So if I want to find this missing part, I can just do 360 minus 275. That is 85 degrees. So that tells me that arc LM here is 85 degrees. Okay, we're supposed to find angle LNM. That's this angle again, so it's just like before. So once again, we'll use the same formula. The angle will equal the big arc minus the small arc divided by 2. That's 95 degrees. All right, that's it for number seven. How about number eight? Okay, this time we are supposed to find the measure of arc Tu. All right, we're given um, this arc and we're given the angle. Uh, the thing is, we don't really need the angle in order to find the measure of arc uh, Tu, do we? Um, we can just subtract from 180. So this is kind of a silly problem. Um, I have a feeling somebody didn't realize that we could just subtract from 180. Um, but that's what we're going to do. Not 180, 360. Um, yeah, if we simply start with 360 and subtract the 235, that should leave uh, arc Tu, no problem. That's 125 degrees. Um, so that's it. All right, I think we were supposed to um, use the formula. Um, let's just do it for fun and see if we get the same answer, which we should. The formula um, would have said the angle, okay, which in this case is 55 degrees, would equal the big arc minus the small arc divided by 2. Now the big arc is 235. The small arc, we'll call it x. So um, let's solve this equation. To solve this equation, we would have multiplied both sides by 2. Okay, um, 2 times 55 is 110. So we would have had 110 is equal to 235 minus x. And then we would have uh, subtracted 235 from both sides. That's negative 125. Whoops, new color. Uh, is equal to negative x. And we would have divided both sides by uh, negative 1. All right, thus, 
turning everything positive. Um, and that would have given us positive x is equal to positive 125. Okay, um, but it would be silly to do all that. It's much quicker to simply subtract 235 from 360. So, a bit of a silly problem. Find the indicated measure. Point G is the in center. Now, the in center is what you would get if you put a little circle inside of here like this. All right, if I made it just right to where it's touching all the sides. Okay, something like this. Um, the center of this circle will be the uh, in center. Okay, now um, if I have a circle situation such as this, what you're going to see is, watch this. Um, so, um, understanding that um, the in center would, is the center of a circle, look where the radii are. All right, this is a radius, and this is a radius, and this is a radius. Okay, that means those three blue segments are congruent. So um, the one segment is 16, that means all of them are 16. 16, 16, 16. All right, they're radii of a circle, so of course they're the same. All right, or you could memorize that the uh, in center is equidistant to the sides of the triangle, but this is why. Um, so, if I ask you to find BG, then we already found it, because BG uh, is the same as um, GF, which is 16. So the answer number 9 is simply 16. What about number 10? Um, okay, this is similar. I won't draw the circle this time. Just imagine the circle right here touching the sides. These three blue lines, they are all the same um, because this is the in, in center. We're supposed to find JP. Okay, JP is this blue line, but all three of these distances are the same. So if we find one, we find them all. And the way we'll, we can find this one, PN, is uh, using the Pythagorean theorem. All right, so it's like this, x squared plus 24 squared is equal to 25 squared. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So um, that's going to give me x squared plus 576 is equal to 625, 25 squared. Uh, subtracting 576 from both sides that's going to give me x squared is equal to, let's see, 625 minus 576. That gives me 49. So x squared is equal to 49. Guess what's coming? If you take the square root of both sides, that gives us that x is equal to 7. All right, that means all three of these blue lengths are 7, including JP. So 7 is the answer to number 10. Okay, what about number 11? What value of x makes n the n in center? All right, in this case, it, it's the uh, red lines that are all the same. Remember, for the in center, it's like there's a circle in here. That's a horrible circle, but um, the distances to the sides are the same for the in-center. So, um, we need to solve for x. Since all these uh, distances, the red distances, are the same, that means um, the 4x could just as easily go up here, all right? 4x is this red line, but this red line is also the same. The reason why I did that is so um, that now I could use um, this triangle up here. Okay, I want to do the Pythagorean theorem using that yellow triangle. 
Okay, so we have leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So watch this. Um, I've got 4x squared, all right, that's one of my legs, uh, plus 48 squared, the other leg, is equal to 52 squared, all right, leg, leg, hypotenuse. Um, well, 4x squared, that's 4x times 4x, so that'll be 16x squared. Um, let's see, 48 squared. That's 2,304. 52 squared. Um, 2,704. So I shall subtract 2,304 from both sides. Hmm, that's going to be 400. So I'm going to have 16x squared is equal to 400. All right, time to divide both sides by 16. OK, so that will give me x squared equals 25. Okay, and taking the square root of both sides, of course, is going to give me x equals 5. All right, so they wanted us to find the value of x that makes n the end center, and uh, that value would be 5. Okay, take a look at number 12. All right, same type of thing, but this time um, it's the blue lengths that are the same, okay, because they are the distances to the sides for the in-center. Those distances to the sides are all the same. By the way, the red distances are the same when it's the circumcenter, which we learned about yesterday. Um, anyway, since all the blue lines are the same, that means that... Um, I could write the 3x here instead if I wanted to. Okay, they're all 3x, 3x, 3x. All of them are 3x. Okay, so if you focus your eyes on this magenta triangle that I'm drawing, um, once again, I will do the Pythagorean theorem. So, leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. 3x squared, that's 3x times 3x, so that's 9x squared. 45 squared. 2,025. 51 squared. 2,601. Subtracting. Five hundred and seventy six. All right, now we would divide both sides by nine. Sixty-four. Finally, we take the square root of both sides. And we get x is equal to 8. All right. Number 13. <clears throat> you are building a monument in a triangular park. You want the monument to be the same distance from each edge of the park. Use the figure with in center G to determine how far from point D 
um, you should build your monument. So we are looking for this distance right here. They told us that G is the in-center, which means that the blue lines are the same. All right, For the in-center, the distances to the sides are the same, not the corners. That would be a circumcenter. Um, so once again, I can just do the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, how far from point D? Um, yeah, we'll just do the Pythagorean theorem. 120 squared plus x squared is equal to 125 squared. Okay, that's 14,400. Hundred twenty five squared, fifteen thousand six hundred twenty five. Let's subtract. One thousand two hundred twenty five. And finally, we take the square root of both sides. Thirty five. All right, do they give us units? Feet, 35 feet. So that is the answer uh, to problem number 13. And I believe that is the last problem on this lesson. All right, I hope it was helpful to you. I will see you on the next lesson.